My um, doctor knew that there was something wrong with her femurs and they were so short and they couldn't figure out what was, you know, wrong with her and stuff. So we had to go to a specialist in Huntsville and that come up that um, they didn't know what it was either. We didn't know her gender or anything like that. Her legs was all bent up in, you know, a certain way inside. So it was kind of a, you know, blind side. You know, we didn't know anything until, you know, the delivery and everything. And there's not a lot of people that know about PFFD. PFFD is proximal femoral focal deficiency. It's the missing bones in the legs or um, where the femurs are smaller. I don't think I really worry about anything because it's kind of something I can't change and something that just, you know, I have to live with. I may not know a lot about the diagnosis, but if I can put, be a comfort for her to talk to, then we want to definitely be that support system for her. When they sent us home, they told us about early intervention and got us set up with speech and occupational and physical since she didn't have the physical part because she had a cleft palate and um, heart problems. She's had nine surgeries since she's been born, so we've, it's been a journey, you know, through that. We've known early intervention since she was probably about three months old. She was the first uh, child I ever met with PFFD, so just learning her story from her mom um, and just knowing, you know, what different things that people go through is just, it, it's heartwarming. It's helped a lot to have um, people there to, you know, stand back and say, hey, if you have a problem or a question or anything, you know, CRS is here and early intervention is here for me, you know, I'm not doing this by myself. She had um, a boy, double boyd amputation at Shriners Hospital. They took and um, they took the top of her t feet and they took her heels and made little stumps for her and stuff. Through therapy and some surgical interventions, they made it so that she is going to be a candidate for uh, some sort of prosthesis. And right now, after she's healed from those surgeries, they have started standing her up. To see her stand up right, you know, is just amazing because she's always been on her belly. She's always been crawling around and never, you know, because she's missing bones in her legs. I'm honestly excited to see what she can do as she grows and if she gets prosthetics to see her walking. CRS and early intervention always, you know, helps us to figure out what the future holds for her and to make sure she's able to complete that goal. Getting her mobile and getting her moving. And um, if one thing don't work, they uh, try something else. They always go the extra mile to make sure that um, she's, you know, where she needs to be. Well, see, one of CRS's roles is we do offer the clinics that she's able to come through and we offer the equipment that as she's progressing with the, the little walker that we had to make, the seven inch walker that uh, Bridget made to cut it down because that's not out there commercially available. Definitely gonna be monitoring her progress with the walker. Um, and if, there, if they assess that there's a need for um, some other piece of equipment, we can, you know, go that route. They watch her uh, move and see how she moves and see if what else they can do to benefit her, to make her move better or make her mobility better. Well, mobility is really important because that's how kids learn. They explore their environment, they get in, into things, and they learn about what's going on by interacting with it. Early intervention and CRS has always, you know, said, hey, you know, she's going to do this in her time, but this is what you can work on you know, to, you know, get her ready to walk, you know, put her in, put her in her prosthetics three times a day and just make her do it, you know. Miss Reeves has the determination and she has the, the push and the drive to keep Mackenzie going to do whatever she needs to do for on Mackenzie's behalf. I want her to be able to not look at her disability and say, you know, I can't do that. She can do anything that she wants to do and, you know, it, it, she does, she does everything by herself. Her cognitive um, development is, I mean, three to five. I mean, she is really smart. She can have a whole conversation with you, you know, and understand and know, you know, things. You know, I just don't want people to look at her and think that, hey, you know, let's not look at her, there's something wrong with her. I want her to know, hey, I'm, there ain't nothing wrong with me, you know. On the social work end, we're going to help her with the school services if she's Mom wants her to be enrolled when she turns three. We can be on, help her with the IEP to get her set up so she can maintain her therapy services. She's mine, 
and I'm just, I'm happy, and I'm, I'm, I know that she will be something in her life, and I know she has a purpose. She just makes my day. She makes me want to get up, and she makes me want to um, be a mom, and to be, um, gives me a smile on my face, and just to watch her grow, and watch her move, and be able to, you know, play and laugh, and, you know, be a normal two-year-old.